the first thing is uh, we would like to know what is farm record keeping? What is farm record keeping and why do we need to do uh, farm records? And um, I don't know whether we can see a picture there, Chibet, can you see the picture, the next slide? Yes, I can just proceed. Okay, okay. So I want us to start with a short story. Uh, this is a story we had shared last time. And I want uh, any participants maybe to feel free and participate and uh, answer uh, what I'm about to ask. We have Mali's story to start with. Mr. Mali happens to be one of our farmers, uh, probably in Kangaroo, who really keeps records of his farm and makes farm decisions based on comparison on how he views his farm against his neighbor's farm. Like most of us would just do. We just compare what is happening in my neighbor's farm versus my farm. And this is a typical uh, example of what is happening right on the ground. And um, he has this good cow that he names Moshi. But its milk production uh, started going lower and lower. And even it had some conception problems. And he went to seek advice from his neighbor, Mr. Kenda. And they opted the best way is to dispose uh, Mosh, our good cow, because now this, it seems not to be producing. And that is what happens in a typical farm. Everybody will just dispose the cow that is not very good to them. And that is the cow we are very fast to adapt. And nobody will give you their best cow. But surprisingly, when this cow landed to uh, the person who bought it, he discovers that the cow is very good. And he comes back to thank Mr. Mali for selling him the best cow in his yard today. So let's start with a question here. What was Mr. Mali's problem? Somebody can just unmute and maybe tell me, what do you think was Mr. Mali's problem? Anyone? I can now uh, try. Yes, please. Uh, Mr. Mali is the farmer who sold the cow that he thought was problematic, right? Yes. Yeah, now I think the problem that he had was that uh, he didn't have re maybe records to show uh, how the cow was performing. If we had, he, if we had many cows, eh? mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, the production of the rest was not good. So he just concluded, this cow is also not good, let me sell it. But if we had individual records for each cow, he would have been able to know that uh, the cow that he's selling was actually his best performing cow. Ah, thank you very much. Uh, that's very right. I don't know anybody with another suggestion. Or another point of view, why did this guy, what was the problem with this guy? He sells the cow that he believes is the worst. When it lands to another farm, it becomes the best. Anyone else who wants to give a trial? I can respond again, Mary? Yes. Maybe? Okay. Mm, maybe another problem could have been now. Um, management because we know management takes um, almost more than 70 percent of the cow's production okay. so if it was not performing at Mali's um, uh, place and then it goes to the other side and performs maybe the the the, the feeding or whatever changed and uh, suddenly the cow that was not performing was now doing it was the best okay thank you very much i really appreciate and uh, thanks for your contribution. There's one more response. Uh, yes, please. Uh, Joseph Ibagendi had asked to address his hand. Can you unmute Joseph and give us your response? Hi. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. Yes. I uh, was giving the same point as the one lady who uh, given up. 
Hello? I was yes, saying, we can hear you. I was saying, management may, the side of management will describe the production. Mm -hmm. Sometimes from nutrition and uh, disease control. Mm -hmm. Management, management. Okay. Ah, thanks very much, uh, Kibagendi. I really appreciate. And uh, all those answers are correct. But let's go through uh, record keeping and see whether from our topic today, we will be able to solve Mr. Mali's problem. So I will start by uh, defining what farm records are. Uh, basically, what is farm record keeping? And uh, we would want to linger in our mind what exactly is uh, farm record keeping and why should we keep should the records? The record? I'm trying to move this uh, slide to the next slide and it seems like it's not moving. Just a minute. And uh, what we can say is that, I don't know, can you see the next slide now? No, we can't see it. And now? We are still seeing the slide with a question mark. Mm. Mm. I don't know, my comp just hung again. Can you see it now? Have you shared it? We can't see it. Oh yeah, yes, now we can see it. Is what we call record keeping. If you are not consistent, 
You can Sorry, Mary, we lost you. Sorry, participants, for that technical hitch. Can you hear me now? Yes, loud and clear. Yeah. So I was saying uh, record keeping is the act of having a track of the history uh, of a person's or organization's activities which are done by ensuring that you have consistent formal records. And I was just saying that if you are not consistent, you keep records today, tomorrow you are not there. Uh, today you write about uh, what is happening in the farm, tomorrow you don't have the same. When you lack consistency, that is not proper record keeping. And we were saying therefore, in a farm setting, record keeping is keeping account of different activities, different events, materials, uh, that regard the farm operation. So uh, farm record keeping involves keeping both farm accounts that deal with the financial aspects of all farm operations. Most of us will not want to do the bit of accounting, but you realize uh, we really need to have the accounts that deal with financial aspects of the farm as well as operations. You can see our challenge with Mr. Mali is that he never kept the records. Probably he even sold that cow very cheaply, assuming that it is not a very good cow. It is not producing after all. But if he had proper records, he could even be able to evaluate and know uh, the worth of that cow. So here we look at both fi financial aspects of farm operations, as well as the production records uh, that deal with day-to-day -day management of the farm. And why do we need to keep farm records? That is a question we might want to ask ourselves. Why, what is it necessary? What, what are the main objectives for keeping a farm record? And um, we are saying this is necessary element of good farm management. A farm managed without records is not um, properly managed. What we can call this is uh, acting out of uh, wishful thinking, and uh, lack of facts and uh, lack of uh, forecast, you are even not able to do forecasting for that farm. And that's why we really need a good element of uh, record keeping as part of our management. And we also need these records very importantly to make decisions so that we don't just make decisions on hearsay. You know, farmers, we are used to moving uh, with the crowd. You hear it is a season whereby everybody is keeping quails. All farmers go to quails. Tomorrow, you hear the most profitable thing in your farm is uh, keeping rabbits and selling uh, rabbit urine. I'm not the, saying that uh, such activities are wrong, but I'm just saying the farmers will all move in a wave. Everybody will want to keep the quail. Everybody will try to keep the rabbit. Everybody. But without good uh, management and good records, it is very difficult for you as a farmer to make decisions. You end up just following a wave. And that is what we want to learn today so that we are just not uh, making decisions from a hearsay, but we are making decisions from a point of information. And we can only be informed by the records we keep. Also records act as a score or the report card on the farm performance. We understand whether our farm is doing well or bad depending on records, on what we see. Most of us will just say, ah, things are not good this time round. Uh, with the, the COVID-19 pandemic, things are not working. But to some farms, it is even an, ad an advantage. As we know, the pandemic is not very good. Yes, we accept all of us. But some people and some businesses might thrive even higher in such times. Why? Because with their records, they, have, they are able to forecast and see this is the avenue that I'm going to link into. So they, they also give us the score. They tell us how we are performing. This is the scorecard of the farmer. And uh, without records, the farmer realizes that his own memory, which might not be quite reliable, especially over time, may fail them. 
because you try to remember this cow was born this age, the mother was so and so, the sire was so and so, the dam was so and so, the sire was so and so. And with time, that memory fades. With time, you forget. With the increase of herd and size of farm, uh, some small details might escape us. So we, we cannot truly rely on our memory. And that's why we need farm, uh, farm records. Again, some decisions might also be missed based on assumptions other than the real facts. The records will give us the real facts. So advantages of farm records, this one I'll just brush through quickly because I want to look at, I want us later on to have an, a view of each and every uh, record that we have on our farm. So some of the advantages of farm records include uh, they assist in formulation of feed programs. Uh, we are able to have good feeding programs and strategies through the records we have. The records will tell us the nutrition needs for uh, various uh, animals in our farms and even for animals at different stages. For example, the nutrition needs for a calf may not be the same as that one for a, a lactating cow, may not be the same like that one's for a, bull may be in the same farm. So we are able to do uh, formulation. We are able to know uh, which feeds uh, we will be keeping and how. So we come up with a good program. They assist in identification of abnormal conditions and diseases and infections. I, I, I like what uh, Kibagendi has just said. He said that Mr. Manley may not have even known whether the animal was maybe sick and needed attention, maybe diseases, and needed attention. Yeah, we may not know if we don't keep records. So these records really assist us to understand and to see the abnormal conditions that may arise in our farms and some uh, disease issues that may arise even in our farms. And we are able to handle that uh, in good timing. Also, uh, from records, it's possible to single out, single out commonly occurring diseases, as well as animals that are susceptible to a certain ailment. There are certain, uh, certain uh, outbreak that comes in and this animal is ever sick. And we are able to think out which animals are weak in, this, uh, in, in, in terms of sicknesses and as, as well as what are these diseases that are repeatedly occurring in our farm so that we are able to uh, do proper management. They also assist in supervision and management of the entire farm, including aspects to do with labor. Uh, with records, you will supervise easily. You will manage your farm easily. You will even manage the labors. You will see at this point of time, we have a lot of activity in this farm. I need to add more manpower, more labor. At this other time, we, we, we are not very busy. Nothing much is happening and you reduce on labor. That means you also reduce on cost. Um, farm records also inform the farm about the strength and weaknesses of their farm operations. And again, uh, farm economics are done through records. Uh, we can know whether our farm is profitable or not based on the records we keep. Uh, the cost of production, the margins that we're having, what is the best production method that we are doing that will give us more better margins and better profits, as well as uh, also understanding our inflows and our outflows in the farm and for better budgeting you can only rely on records. Uh, we are also able to determine the efficiency of the farm labor and the herd from records kept. If we have records, we can see, are we operating at our optimum or are we below optimum? Because at any given time in our farm, we want to be at optimum production, optimum capacity. And this can only be seen from uh, the records we keep. Uh, we need farm records also for taxation and tax reporting purposes, uh, depending on ex where you are. But uh, we also need to pay taxes even as farmers. And for tax purposes, uh, we need those records. Uh, farm records also assist us to compare the prof profitability over several years, several seasons, and therefore we can make trends. You know, in any business, you'll always have the bloom and the blast. There are times when business is up, there are times when business is down. That is not a uh, very, uh, what you can say, it, we cannot afford to ignore this, the blooms and the blasts, especially when it comes to farming. Because farming, however much we want to say it, however much we will modernize, we will still move with 
seasons. We still have seasonality trends. And therefore, uh, we need records to analyze these trends and know what is best at what time. So uh, those are just a few um, advantages, maybe I would say of keeping farm records. And therefore, uh, at this point, I want us to look at uh, what are the key aspects that we will look in when uh, doing farm records? What are the key aspects? What are the key things that we will want to know uh, when uh, doing record keeping? Now, one of the key elements that we need to look at when doing record keeping um, is uh, the records should be simple. Don't complicate issues. Don't complicate yourself. Don't complicate your life. Don't uh, go by records that are very complicated that even you, you may not uh, be able to analyze. Therefore, make your records as simple as possible. Again, keep only useful records. What you don't need, don't keep. Don't keep records so complicated of things that you may not require and data that may not be useful to you in making uh, decisions. Again, um, records should be easily con con convertible to information that lead to actions to be taken. We are not keeping records just for the sake of keeping records, just for the sake of saying, I am keeping records. No, we need records that can give us certain information certain conclusions, certain thesis, certain uh, 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 drawbacks, that from these records, we are able to say, because of A, B, C, D, point of action, I will have to do one, two, three. Because uh, from my records, I'm seeing my feed intake is costing me more and more money. I need to cut down on my expenses in this and this area, yet maintain an optimal production. Because at some point you have to spend to get more, but optimally. So with records, make sure you have records that you can convert to some <coughs> useful information and the information that can lead to actions. Then avoid duplication of records or information. You find uh, in, in some record keeping uh, programs or farms, a lot, a lot of repetition that is just giving us the same thing. So kindly avoid duplications. And then records should provide essential information on timely basis. At any particular time, we want certain information, let it be available because we are keeping records. Don't overstay and say, I'll only do my records once in a year. So you have to wait every other activity that took place in January, February, March, you're keeping it so that you can record it in December. That one might not be helpful to you because somewhere along June, you need some information about this animal that you are keeping that you need maybe to call or maybe to upgrade it. Then always remember the level of details on your records depends on the complexity and the size of your farm. How detailed your records will be is pegged on the complexity and the size of your farm. Now, now that we know the aspects we need to consider in farm record keeping, let us uh, kindly go through a few uh, categories of farm records. I have uh, put them in around uh, seven categories that you can check into that we really need in our farm. So uh, the first category of our farm records, we will be looking at things to do with identification, the history. We will also be looking at breeding and why we need these breeding records. We'll be looking at production records, health records, stock records, feed records, feed, feeds and feeding records, and then financial records. And why each, each, each category is important in our farm. So let's start with animal identification uh, records or the history records. Uh, these are records that give us information on major events or individual, probably in this instance, I was using the example of a cow, in individual, uh, maybe crop in our farm, animal in our farm, and it gives us the major identification information, even from birth, to the time it leaves our herd, to the time it leaves our farm. 
The key information that we need in this record includes the animal name or the identif identification number, the date of birth, when was it born? If it was not born there, when did it join the herd? Uh, that is if we purchased it. The type of breed uh, for, on, on that animal, uh, the Calvin period, uh, month for each Calvin interval, and the lactation period. Uh, I was using the example of a cow, and that's why we have uh, the lactation period being key. Again, we also need to know the yield. Per total, per, a total lactation period, how much was the yield? And then when did we dry it? Uh, the calf, the calf that was born maybe by this cow, what was its sex, its identification number, and if we are to cull this animal, the age at which we are culling it, and if we are to dispose, not cull, maybe, maybe it had an accident and we have to dispose or something, we need to know the date of disposal, the date it leaves our herd, and uh, why? Why is it leaving our herd? And uh, purposes for this kind of record are, one, they help us to determine whether the animal is an appropriate size for its age. Remember, last uh, class we were learning um, about um, identification and uh, something that uh, one of our pa panelists talked about uh, milking and the age at which you are supposed to first uh, do your first milking or uh, calfing for uh, uh, heifers or insemination for heifers. And we say it in cows, what matters most is the weight. So we need to know at what age did it attain the required weight. Okay, to evaluate also overall herd reproduction and determine the age of heifers at first hit, we need to know there are some animals that will come on hit earlier than others. There are some breeds that will are good in this, others are not. It also helps to know the age at which the heifer should be targeted for breeding. It is uh, we when we have records and we can see attainment of weight versus age, it can even give us a good forecasting point whereby we can know at a certain age, we expect this animal to have attained this weight and hence we can target it for breeding. It also provides information to compare genetics, genetic lines across the area with other dairy farmers. Let's, if we are to compare our farms, let's compare farms with information and from our records. And we can do this uh, uh, using our, 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 our records that we have kept. And these identification records will be very key. Last time we were doing something on uh, sire catalog interpretation. And I remember the presenter saying that when you are analyzing the CAGRIC catalog, you are basically comparing the production of that cow as per USA, because uh, that is where we are doing a, a comparison for. So definitely, if that cow is producing uh, plus 30 liters or 300 liters, it is above the herd in USA. So when you are trying to compare farms, let's we, we use this kind of information to help us compare. To determine which animal should be culled on the basis of age. At a certain age, we need to cull some animals. So we can only determine that uh, using identification uh, records. So we move on to the next type of records. And here, after we have identified our animals, we want to know more about breeding. We want to know uh, when to breed, how, uh, which plan and design. And uh, here, we need the breeding records. They show the breeding trends of each animal in the farm. They show us uh, when this cow uh, got its first calf, second calf, third calf, it's in which lactation and such like stuff. They are key info informants on farm breeding plants. You, it would be practically impossible to do a, a good breeding design or a good breeding plan if we don't have breeding records. And the key information in these records uh, what do we need to include in our breeding records? Of course, we need to know the animal, either by name or by identification number, the date of birth, the name of the sire and the dam. Some records, like even our catalog here, 
will include the grand sire and the grand dam. Want to know this animal came from where? From which animal? From which breed? What was the performance of the dam and the sire? And is the daughter uh, up to the same? Is it more better than what the dam and the sire were doing? Did we achieve that 50-50 uh, uh, genetic uh, inheritance from the sire and the dam? Those are some of the things we need to check out in breeding records. We also look at heat dates. Uh, when did the animal come on heat? And if it was served, did it conceive? Or uh, did it have a silent heat that we did not discover? Or uh, did we try um, serving the animal and then it did not conceive? So how many times did we serve it before it conceives? Uh, those are some of the issues we will find in our breeding records. We'll also be looking at the Calvin dates uh, of this animal. Uh, the earliest breeding date, when was it the, uh, the earliest time possible that this heifer was, uh, was brought to service? We will look at service information, the date of service, was the service successful? Uh, sometimes you will want to know who served it and which kind of uh, semen it was served. Those are some of the information we need here. We need pregnancy diagnosis and examination also in our breeding records. Uh, the expected calving date, when are we expecting this uh, animal to calve? The actual, we have what we expect and of course what happens on the ground. Uh, so we can compare our expectation versus the actual calving date. Uh, if calving was normal, or it had complications. You will also want to know. And if it had, if it had complications, which complications? Uh, the number of calves that were born, let's not assume that every cow will only give us one calf. Uh, some will give us twins. Uh, the name of the calves and the identification numbers are also the sex. Um, the number of bulls uh, that served it, definitely you'll get that one, especially if you're using AI. The weight at pregnancy. We want to see uh, how the, the increase in weight all along and the weight of the calf bone is very critical. And of course, the day we dried the cow. So those are key informations that we will find in, uh, in our breeding records. But why do we need all this in our breeding records? And therefore, we come to purpose. Why, 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 why do we need this breeding record. Uh, they help us to improve on breeding management. Remember, as Greek, we are advocating for improvement of our genetics, improvement of our breeding, improvement of the cow we have. Not like that a cow is not serving us today and we just decide to dispose of, buy another one. And the one we are buying is the worst cow from that farm where we are buying one. Why not improve what we have? And uh, that is why we are specializing on this, but it, is, it would be practically difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it is a bit difficult to improve our breeds if we don't have these kind of records. And then we also need to know when we dried a cow. We need to know uh, when a cow should deliver. This one will also assist us in planning for nutrition, planning for um, uh, the environment. Uh, the, that is uh, the... the, the, the the hard environment, ensuring that we have good housing and all that. Also highlighting poor insemination or bull services. It will help us to highlight poor insemination done. And establishing breeding dates. We also need to establish uh, our breeding dates and the feeding programs. We can also uh, use this information on the same. And then identification of calf and sire. Back the identification information will also part of it will come from the breeding records. And then uh, determining the date of pregnancy testing. Uh, we, if we have served today and we want to test pregnancy, uh, we will need our breeding records for that. And also we avoid in breeding so that we don't uh, uh, make same uh, animals from the same family. You can only do that successfully if you are keeping breeding records. Otherwise, you will find uh, you are mating cousins and then production is going down the heterosis factor is bringing, uh, is, it comes in. And um, we all know that inbreeding will bring us down even economically. Again, heat synchronization uh, in farms where we have large farms and we want to uh, serve the animals at a go at once uh, for management purposes, we can 
successively do synchronization if we have uh, breeding records. Also know the milking speed and the milking quality. This is something that we were taught by Kibe last time about um, milk recording. And uh, we're able to know that we need to understand the milking speed, what is the optimum speed, and how much do you milk from this cow at what speed, and also the quality, quality of milk. And also uh, from breeding records, we are able to describe the traits of a specific animal. We can know what we desire whether we will get it from this. I remember um, when we were doing the sire catalog interpretation, we said that uh, different traits in different animals might be what a certain farmer desires, but it becomes quite different and quite opposite in another farm. Somebody wants a big uh, cow to show off for the uh, show presentations or uh, parading of animals and such like, well, another person is out for milk, another person is out for butter fat content. So for you to know the traits, the desirable traits that you need maybe to pass on to the daughter animals, we will require breeding records. Now let's look at production records. Uh, these are a bit common. Uh, most people would uh, do production records and ignore every other kind of record, but let us look at, uh, have a, a detailed look on this. In production records, uh, we try to measure the animal and the business performance. We try to look at the performance of this animal, even economically, uh, versus uh, our business. Is it, is it worth our business? Is it worth our farm? We can only know that from production records. This includes milk production records that captures the individual cow milk yield per day, excuse me, <coughs> uh, even uh, in the intervals of milking, for example, AM and PM. So we are able to know uh, how much yield we got. Uh, these records are also useful in measuring the performance of the herd and for the economic appraisal of the enterprise. We can only appraise the enterprise from the performance of the herd. And the performance of the herd comes from the production record of each and individual animal. The key information in these records, uh, we need to look at things like the average daily weight gain. We look, uh, we are feeding these animals, are they adding weight? Uh, for example, especially for those who are doing uh, fattening of animals, uh, we look at dairy milk yield per animal, especially for those who are key in dairy, uh, the start and the end of lactation period and the dates, the butterfly yield, the protein yield of that animal, and um, generally the performance, the output of this animal. We have put in um, our money, we have put in resources on this animal. Now here we will also be looking at what we've put in versus what is coming out from this animal. Mm -hmm. Purpose, why, 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 why keep production records? Um, one, they help determine which animals are contributing for the increase or decrease of the total uh, farm yield, probably milk yield. Uh, we can be looking at maybe the eggs, if it is in poultry, we can be looking at uh, the kilos, if it is uh, beef or pork and all that. They also show the profitability of the farm. It is from this production record that we will know whether we are making a profit or a loss, whether our farming is agribusiness, in terms of uh, we are doing agriculture for business, or if we are just keeping our animals for hobby, whereby we are putting in so much, they are giving us very little by the end of the day. So the profitability of that farm can only be determined from production records. Uh, they also show the income from the herd, what income is coming in. And they assist in specific management for individual animals to improve the production. When we are trying to improve breeds, when we are trying to improve our herd, by the end of the day, what we are trying to look at is improvement of production. Uh, there's no need for maybe if you are a dairy farmer, keeping so many animals, feeding so much, yet whatever they are producing with good management and improvement, probably five cows will do. If you are keeping 20 cows that are giving you five liters each cow, that is 20 times five, that's a hundred liters. 
Where else you could just give, keep five cows producing 20 liters? There you save a lot. So these are some of the, the matrices we would want to look at and you can find them from production records. Okay, they also inform the farmer what type of feed, a feeding strategy to follow and uh, for, we, for which cow and at whatever level. Again, uh, individual cow production records are combined to give the total herds performance. Total herds performance is always found from each and individual record uh, put together. We also have what we call the health records. We want to know if our farm is healthy or not. And healthy farms will always cost us a fortune. They'll always cost us our money. They'll always cost us our time. And uh, health records are very crucial, very crucial in a farm. They show the health conditions of the animals in the herd. Uh, they are useful in culling decisions as well. We just don't pick up and say, I'm going to cull this animal. But we can determine from the health perspective of those animals and see which animals we need to cull at whatever time, as well as isolation due to health parameters. When our animals are sick, we want to put the sick animals aside for some time so that we give them some special attention and see them improve. Or even if they're not improving, I get them out of our head. So key information in these records, we need the, of course, the name or the identification number of that animal, the vaccinations we've done, and when did we do them, as well as uh, the deworming uh, part of it. And then we also look at if the animal is sick, what treatment was, was it given? What drugs was it given? What were the diagnoses? And um, we can, from health records of an individual animal, we can see in, in a certain period of time, every other disease that maybe this animal had, we can look at the somatic cell count data uh, from the analysis of the monthly milk records, also in health. Remember when we were doing sire catalog interpretation, we said uh, when we are doing the genomics for our animals, one of the things we look at is the somatic cell count. It tells us um, how much to expect uh, in terms of mastitis and how to control the same. So we will need to look at somatic cell count, not only for mastitis, but also for other sicknesses. Where when we find the white blood cells going up, we are bound to ask ourselves what is happening to this animal? What pathogens is the animal trying to fight? Then the, we look at the health history, uh, the symptoms, the diagnosis, the treatment, the name of the person who tried to treat that animal. Supposing they gave us the wrong diagnosis, or the wrong drugs, we would also want to look into such aspects. We also look at the withdrawal time of a particular drug administered. This is something very crucial, but most farmers will not uh, check into this. When you're administering certain drugs, they need a withdrawal time. When you're not, maybe if it is a cow, you're not milking. If it is um, uh, plants, maybe you're doing. After you administered certain drugs, uh, or pesticides on the farm. We also need to look to be very keen on the withdrawal time so that we don't end up with products that are having uh, chemicals that uh, we do not need probably. Uh, then you look at the dates the animal returned back to the herd. When did it come back? When uh, did it uh, regain the health and uh, better status? And by the way, why do we need to keep health records? Why, why is it so crucial? Why is it so important? Why do we need to bother ourselves and make sure we have health records for our animals? Uh, one, they help us to determine the susceptibility of specific animal to certain diseases. Some animals are prone to certain diseases more than others. Therefore, when we are going for a specific breed, we should be knowing how susceptible is this breed? How can it uh, survive? Also, it's, uh, when we talk about uh, diseases, uh, there are some breeds that are very good uh, disease resistant. Others are uh, harsh climate resistant. So we want to look at such kind of things. Also, we need to plan on needs and uh, nutritional needs for the herd. As you know, if the animal is sick, it requires some extra maybe uh, certain nutrition on certain uh, direction. Also, we need to know the medication offered to sick animals and we observe the response. How are the animals responding to a certain drug that they were given? And uh, again, uh, the health records exist in vaccination and deworming programs for the farm. 
so that you just know woke up today you are deworming uh you deworm again after nine months or deworm again when you hear there is a deworming uh something going on but with health records you will know i'm supposed to deworm maybe after every three months so from these records you are able to keep track of the same again show animals response to treatment how did the animal respond to the treatment that it was given was it positive was it negative was it weakening was it worsening and uh, such kind of information is very uh, critical for our farms. It also assists in information used to select animals in the farm. I will, when I want to buy a cow from you, I want to see its health record. How often is it sick? How, of, how, 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 when was it immunized? When, when did it get uh, vaccinations and such kind of information? And again, they also assist in culling decision. You will know when to cull which animal. Maybe an animal is not responding very well to treatment. And the best way is just to cull it and uh, get it out of our herd. Now, next, let's have a look at stock records. Stock records, they give, keep us a track of the growth records of young stock. Basically, here we are looking at our young stock, our, the, the stock that is coming up, our calves, our heifers. And uh, in stock records, we maintain the key information for replacement at different periods, starting from birth. At some point, you just want to replace this cow. You just want to replace this herd. We are replacing it with what and why and how. So key information in these records, of course, we have the name and the identification number of the calf, the sex of that calf, the sire number, the dam number. We want to know who are the parents, the birth weight, how was that uh, calf born and the winning weight and the age at winning? Again, uh, if it's a heifer, the age at first service and the weight at first service, the age at first calving and the, also the weight at ca first calving. So we're just looking at this young one from birth to maybe when it starts producing. When is the earliest that it started producing? And from this kind of weight gain, the age, and the behavior maybe of the animal, we are able to know whether we will replace it or maintain it in our herd. So uh, the purpose for these uh, records is that uh, young stock recording provides valuable information for growth monitoring of calves and heifers, as well as any other animals that we are keeping in our herds. We need to know uh, the growth monitoring. How are we feeding versus how is the growth and the milestone and the trends that we expect in these animals. Again, they also help us to plan for nutrition needs of the herd. We need to know how many young ones we have in our stock and uh, their, their nutritional requirements. Mm -hmm. We also see the number of young ones in the farm and the cost effectiveness of having them there. If I'm on dairy, and I'm keeping bull, bull calves like 10 of them. And my main production is dairy. I would want maybe to uh, weigh the cost effectiveness of maintaining those bull, bulls in my farm versus disposing them and maintaining their heifers only. So these are some of the information that we get from the stock uh, records. Uh, from stock records, something we have been mentioning in each and every record, that uh, um, is critical and uh, every other record sums up to assisting us in this one, we will be looking at the feeding records. So when we are doing breeding, we want to determine the feeding program. When we are doing uh, stocks, we want to determine the feeding programs. When we are doing every other thing, we also want to determine the feeding programs. And because of this, we require to have the feeding records. Now, these records are very critical because this one shows how much we are putting in. Eh? Remember, production records are trying to show us what is our output. But feeding, feeds and feeding records try to show us what we are putting in. So, uh, we want to see what we are putting in versus what we are putting out, whether it is balancing. And here, these are records that can be divided into two, the feeds and feeding records. Uh, we have records on feeds, uh, production, and purchase. And the second part of feeds and feeding is also 
uh, the specific animal feeding habits and requirements. Maki, we have what we need and how the animal feeds. That is looking at a specific animal and feedings. And we also have the feed production. What uh, are the components of the feed that we are giving this animal? And uh, what different feeds are we bringing in to get together? And uh, in this one, uh, they also show us the type, the quantity uh, on the farm feed production and the feeds purchased probably from outside sources. Key information in these records includes when we look at feed production, the purchase, we want to see the type of feed, the quality, and the prices involved therein. Uh, when we are looking at feeding, uh, we look at the animal, uh, the feed type that we have given the animal, the quantity and the quality of that feed, and we want to see now the output from this animal, whether it uh, matches uh, what we give in. So reasons, the purpose why we need uh, feeding records. Somebody has just unmuted and I can hear a lot of background. Kindly, uh, kindly mute, kindly mute. Okay. So from feeding records, why do we need them? Why do we keep them? The purposes for the feeding uh, records. So first and foremost, these are records that we will use on every, every single day management of our farm. Because every day we need to look at what did we give the animal? How is it responding? And sometimes we need to adjust maybe the ration, maybe the type, and so forth and so on. Together with production data, uh, feeding records can be used to adjust. If a milking cow needs more concentrates or uh, decisions like uh, when we are examining an animal, which seems to be stagnant or standard in growth, what we need to boost up and to see this animal gets on. For example, if the animal is sick, what kind of feeds do we give it so that it re recovers quickly? So these are some of the things uh, we will find in feeding records. The records can also be used for planning of activities related to feed production. Um, based on what we have and what we're giving the animal, we, can, we are able to plan whether we are going to uh, produce our own feeds or purchase uh, feeds. And uh, we can also plan on conservation. Remember, we said consistency of records is key. So with consistency of records, you are able to know at this particular season, we always have a shortage of feeds. So you can conserve the feeds you have. And uh, this is very crucial in maintaining uh, the hard production. Also establishment of grazing areas in case we are doing grazing and establishment of uh, new uh, feeds also that are coming in. Again, Feed production and purchase records provide very information inform information on the proportions of feeds produced and versus proportions of feeds purchased. And this informs the farmer to better manage the different sources of feeds. Remember, um, our feeds is what we give out in the farm, what we put in, in the farm, expecting a certain uh, output. Therefore, we really need to uh, have a very good management on this so that we don't also squeeze so much and compromise production or give too much and end up with very little production. Now let's look at financial records. These are records most people will not want to keep. And um, if you're not keeping financial records for whatever organization that you are running in, then we are not able even to know what is your input in that what uh, the performance of that uh, farm or organization. Remember, um, we are doing farming as a business. Unless you are doing farming as a hobby, we just keep uh, animals for aesthetic value. Financial records are very crucial. And in a society where we are living with uh, scarce scarcity of resources, we need to manage every single resource that we have. And that's where these records come in very handy. 
financial records are records uh, that show us the costs and the earnings related to uh, maybe the dairy farm or whatever farm activity we are doing. And they are recorded for financial analysis uh, and also appraisal of that uh, specific farm. They show us the cost of equipments we are keeping, the assets that we have, the workers that we have, the payment sales records, the cash flows and the uh, inflows and outflows, as well as the budgets and the focus that we have on the farm. There are very many and several uh, financial records that we can keep, but I, I chose to look at some that I felt are very critical for our farm. We need to have a profit and loss account. We need to look at uh, the profits and the losses that we are making, uh, what we call the P and L of, of any given farm. This one just tries to show uh, what money has come in, the incomes versus the expense, uh, expenditures for a certain period. In most farms, you will do a P and L for a week. If you are earning weekly, others will want to do for a month. The most standard one is doing a P and L for a month. So that we know whether that month we've made a profit or a loss. We also need sales ledgers. We need to record every sales that are getting out of that farm because it is from the sales ledgers that we will combine uh, the incomes that will be used in the profit and loss. Again, we also need a cash flow analysis. A cash flow analysis uh, tries to show us uh, the balances of cash that we had at the beginning of a certain period and uh, the cash balances, uh, the, the, the trends of how we've used the cash and the cash balances at the end of that uh, period. And now we know how much we are, whatever we have at the balance of uh, a cert, at the end of a certain period now becomes the uh, starting uh, cash in for the next period. And with cash flow analysis, they, they tend to bring us to a point whereby we are able to do a forecast and see these are the trends of my cash flow and I need to minimize here to increase my cash flow. And they also try to help us uh, to be a bit liquid in the farm. Just in case uh, we have emergencies or anything else, we are enough uh, liquidity with us. So cash flow analysis are very critical. I think uh, in one of these webinars, we will handle uh, these records one by one as uh, we, we make one. Maybe uh, we can have a whole day learning on the cash flow analysis. Again, we also have the balance sheet. Uh, this tells us the equity of the firm. It tells us uh, the assets that we have and uh, the position of the firm by the end of a certain period and most preferably the end of a whole year. So uh, these are very critical uh, records that we have. And anybody who wants to access the profitability of your farm, uh, the, um, how solid your farm is, the soundness of your farm, and uh, also your inputs in the farm. And even for people who want to do partnerships in farms, maybe you're partnering with another person or another organization in terms of uh, injecting in um, resources for that farm, in terms of expansion of the farm, these are very critical records that will be uh, asked for. So farmers, kindly, let's not uh, fear the mathematics involved with uh, farm records. Let's remember that uh, uh, those, those calculations, those uh, financials are what we need even to make very solid decisions on our farm and even to expand our farms. So uh, let us look at uh, the reasons why we keep financial records. The reasons why we have financial records or the purpose that uh, we keep uh, financial records is one, to provide the farmer with the information concerning the profitability of his farm. We have seen that over and over. Again, uh, they help in decision-making at the right time. For example, is it profitable to feed on concentrate or produce? Like right now, uh, here in Kenya, we are having our short rains, the April rains, and um, most farmers at this time would prefer to produce their own feeds. But 
there's coming a uh, there's coming a season where there's uh, the pro production will be very costly probably if you are dependent on rain rain fed and uh the dry spell is coming up at that time you need to buy more so such decisions uh, can be evaluated using our records uh, they also assist the farm in appraising appraisal farm appraisal when borrowing any any financial institution that would want to inject their money and lend you as a farmer they want to see these records they want to see how sound your farm is how solid your farm is what is your asset investment in that farm and uh, how profitable is your farm if i give you my money uh, to inject in your farm even before we get to that production what you have today is it able to maintain the farm and pay back my money so these are some of the things that uh, uh, people coming in and other organizations coming in and financial institutions coming in maybe to assist us when borrowing will look at so if you don't keep financial records they will assume this is just a hobby and appraisal becomes difficult again there is advice on investment decisions based on your financial records you can see whether it is the right time to buy certain machinery involve certain technology in your farm and whether you have the money to do it or the ability to do it actually here we are looking at more so the ability and then they also show the inventory of what we have done we have in the farm we have an inventory of uh, all the machines, all the equipment that we have in the farm. So we're able to know where we have deficiencies, what we need to invest on. And then they're extensively used in production and testing programs. We will not uh, put you in a program for production or testing or uh, any other program when we don't know how stable you are to maintain those animals. Again, determine they are key determinant in selection and culling as they help analyze the profitability of each individual animal. So we are able to know whether we are making profit and if we are not making, we cull some of the animals. So the, the, basically uh, those are the main reasons why we keep the seven main categories of uh, records. And uh, at least here we are able to appreciate uh, each record, each category of records and why we are keeping them. Now, there's something very interesting that uh, I wanted us to look at. And uh, it, this, whatever we are looking at, sums up whatever we have. Now, you can see, even from what we have learned, Mr. Mali lacked uh, records. He could not tell when the cow went down and when it didn't. He could not tell uh, maybe the genetics or uh, the cow that he had, probably the cow uh, had very good genetics, only management issues. And uh, his production was based on what his neighbor is telling him and not records. Therefore, he made up a, de he made up a decision of culling the animal and removing the animal from his herd. And uh, this animal lands into another herd where uh, maybe records are kept and maybe a little improvement on nutrition, a little improvement on health, and the animal is able to pick and produce at optimum. Again, this guy did not even consider looking at uh, which lactation this animal is in before he could dispose it. Probably it was just in its first lactation and we needed to reach to second, third lactation for optimum production. So we can see the, the key problem with uh, Mr. Mali when we started the story I gave it is purely records. So let's not repeat what Mr. Mali is doing. Let us be wise enough. So I want us at this juncture just to have a look at what we call the cow card. For those of us who are doing dairy, what we call the cow card. The cow card is a record that puts in summary most important information relating to an individual animal. Uh, it summarizes most of the information uh, in the above records in a much simpler way. Uh, each individual animal should have its own, sorry, that was a typing error, should have its own cow card. The cow card has several sections, as you will see, because it's trying to summarize all those seven categories of uh, information together. And, uh, also tries to simplify the same. 
So you find that we have a session of the cow card that gives the animal identification and the pedigree selection. Uh, we have a breeding uh, session where it tells us uh, breeding records, the dam, the sire, etc. It also gives us now the production of the animal. And uh, it also has the last sec section that gives us the general health, vaccination, and the warming program. Now, if you're doing dairy, it is good that uh, you make sure that each of your animals has a cow cud. And that one would simplify and summarize right. most of this information. And uh, at a glance, using that card, you are able to tell so much about that animal. I have a picture of a cow cud here. Uh, maybe we can have a look at it. It's, uh, we require the farm's name, the farmer's name, the address where it's located, the animal identification part, where we have the cow's name, the breed, the year tag number, when it was born or brought, um, KSB number, the sire, the dam sire, the grand dam, and all that. We also need uh, the numbers for the dam and the sire. Again, you can see the date it was served, the bull that was to serve, the date of con uh, conception, the pregnancy diagnosis, the calving date, the sex of the calf. So most of this information we've been talking about is all summarized in one cow card. The part two of the card just shows us the production records and the health records. So uh, a farmer who might be finding keeping these single, 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 single records a challenge, uh, you can always get a cow card. Uh, at Kenya Animal Genetic Resource Centers, we have uh, we have a cow card. We have cow cards that we sell, and even cow files, red files, whereby you can store the cow cards. You can uh, maybe file in the cards if there are several cards. And uh, I also know my colleagues from Kenya Livestock um, Breeders Association are also having a cow card. So you can liaise with either of us, maybe to make sure that your herd has such. And then. Uh, we finish up with looking at different methods of record keeping. We have what we have, the manual system, whereby you just uh, handwrite. Maybe you fill in your cow card. Uh, maybe you do uh, writing in a book. Others buy a whole book to do their recording, which is also okay. So we have the manuals or the hand system of keeping records. And uh, we also have computerized uh, systems. With technology and improvement in technology, we have several computerized systems that assist us in keeping records in our animals. We have robot ma milking machines um, that can help us even determine the yield uh, or per animal, or per milking. We have uh, robot livestock feeders. As we feed the animals, they're recording for us what we are feeding and how the, qu uh, the quantities. Again, we have Cow heat detection devices uh, that help us to detect uh, the animals on heat uh, mechanically, uh, helping us increase in pregnancy rates. Uh, we have the electronic ear tags that identify the uh, domestic livestock, especially if you have a big hut. We have the use of aerial drones. They spot weeds, they spot uh, animals. They, they help us manage uh, the animals even from an aerial point of view. And we have uh, combined harvesters for those who are doing uh, grains, who are doing uh, crop yielding. And also when you are doing maybe your own uh, production, uh, feed production in the farm. Uh, most of these uh, are connected to our smartphones so that we can check, track, and understand more even from our phones. Uh, we have driverless tractors. Uh, we have the GPS system. And uh, we also have the farm management softwares. We are, as, 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 as an organization, we are also trying to see whether we can come up with some of these softwares that can help our farmers in Kenya. So uh, those are the computerized uh, systems. And therefore, in conclusion, uh, we can say record keeping is a very vital part of farm management and practices. And uh, record assumed in one mind are not part of record keeping. And uh, the analysis of farm records is very important. So do not keep records just for the sake of keeping records. Rather, uh, let's 
uh, firm decisions be informed from the records we have. And I think with that much, uh, we have uh, tackled uh, record keeping. And at this juncture, I will hand back to uh, Madam Paris, our moderator, and uh, we will be able now to handle uh, the questions uh, that maybe we have on our chat, on our Q&A. And uh, if you have a question, you can just raise your hand up and uh, we will be able to handle that together with the other panelists. So uh, most welcome uh, for question and answer series. Thank you. Madam wow. Paris, Karibu. Thank you so much, Mary, for that elaborate presentation. I believe uh, um, most of us or all of us uh, keep records uh, in one way or another, but I believe after this presentation, we'll be able to improve our record keeping so that we can be able to do dairy, dairy as a business and not as a hobby. So at this juncture, I would like us to go direct to the question and answer session. Uh, but before that, uh, just to remind uh, the participants that this is, a, this is a CPD webinar, kindly indicate your name and the KVB registration number. And also to welcome uh, Dr. Mary Agutu from the Kenya Veterinary Board. You are welcome, Dr. Agutu. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thank you. And uh, Mary Kaiki, sorry for, for that um, uh, hitch at the beginning of the introductions. I had actually thought it's uh, our presenter who had joined with two uh, login uh, accounts. Sorry for that. It was not intentional. Now we go to the... Okay. We go to the Q&A session. Mm -hmm. We have a question from uh, Christopher Auma. He's asking which is the best practice in the farm to keep segmented or consolidated farm records, especially from one to six in mind, in mind are non-computerized farms. He's asking which is the best practice in the farm to keep segmented ones or I believe computerized ones. I think anybody from uh, the, the, the panel can answer that. We can help the participants. Okay, Paris, uh, Christopher, I may try attempt to answer Christopher. Uh, which is the best practice in the farm to keep segmented or consolidated farm records, especially from one to six in mind uh, that uh, we are not using computerized uh, methods here. I think uh, to me, if you can manage to consolidate the, the, the records into one book or uh, yeah, one hardcover book, whereby when I look from this side, I will get the animal identification. At the other column, I will get uh, the breeding information. Another column, probably I will get uh, the, 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 the production. That can be good. But the challenge with uh, consolidating information is that you might leave very vital information. And that's why you've seen we are coming up with this uh, cow card that tries to consolidate most of this information, but in a very simplified manner. But the best for any farm is the best that they can maybe what they can maintain at their level in a simplified manner, understand and interpret the same. Because even if they kept segmented and they are not able to interpret the same information, it would not be very useful. But if you are keeping a large herd, probably, and uh, you are keeping animals that you are upgrading with time, uh, segmentation might be very critical because uh, different players coming in in your farm want different kind of information, not the whole information. So it all depends by the end of the day, where are you taking that information? Thank you. Thank you, Mary, for that. I hope, uh, Christopher, you are satisfied with that. And uh, we go to Jones Nyanchi Nyachiro. He's asking, do you have an integrated software for keeping 
for record keeping in the dairy farm that can be like a one-stop shop? Maybe I can answer that. Uh, at Cagric, we do not have uh, at, uh, that kind of software, but I believe they are private uh, uh, people who have uh, developed some, uh, some apps. Like we have, I think, Digical, we have, uh, we have quite a number of uh, digital ways of keeping records. So if you can uh, get in touch with us, I think we can be able to help you find one that will fit your needs. Yes, Is there hello. anybody who would want to add to that? Yes, I can add on that. Yes. Yes, I'm Stephen Juma from KLBA. As Thank an you. institution, through our IT department, there's a software, there's an app you're working on, which, will, which is going to be a, a one-stop shop. And right now, there's one of the government institutions that we are working, we are working with, piloting on this um, kind of app. So maybe very soon, we are going to release it in the market after we've now done a pilot uh, project with that institution. Uh, thank you. Well, th thank you, uh, Stephen, for, for the response. Jones, you can see that there's some work that's going uh, on at the background. You may maybe get in touch with uh, KLBA or uh, CAGRIC and will be able to be assisted further. So we go to, is it Cornelius? Just a minute. Cornelius is asking whether we can, can we get digital copies of the presentation? Chebet, you can be able to, to circulate the presentation after this? Yes, kindly send, your, send me your email address. I'll be able to send it. Okay. Peterson Mwangi is asking, is there an app that will help his record keeping? I think that has been answered very well by Stephen Juma. Some work is going on and we'll be able to get that from KLBA and its partners. Uh, we go to Viola Kemis is asking, she's asking, I believe it's a she. Record keeping is a key aspect of daily production. Some of the suggestions like daily weight gain monitoring is a practical challenge on farm. Measuring butter fat and protein content in milk at farm or even cooperative is not practically possible since most farmers do not have the equipment. However, I believe we should be forward looking to improve. What's your practical suggestion? I look forward to digitize farm management software, softwares applicable and usable by smallholder farmers. Well, wow, that's, a, that's a challenge that uh, the presenter is ex saying uh, the experience at, at, at farm level. Maybe we have uh, our director of strategy and planning, Dr. Herbert Asiaya. Maybe if you could please comment on that, whether we have some practical suggestions on uh, measuring butter fat, protein content, daily weight management, etc. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I, I tend to think that the the, the day the day the weight me measurement was really referring to those people who are going to keep, who, who will keep animals for purposes of uh, meat production because you want to know how are they gaining their weight. So that is very critical if you have got that kind of enterprise, as uh, it may not be that much. Uh, important in a beef in a beef enterprise as, as in dairy. Uh, now coming back to butterfat and um, and uh, maybe protein content, I think last week or the other week we were talking about uh, the, the, we had a talk on um, dairy recording center and the fact that you can take samples of milk can be collected and those are the guys right now who can do that. They can test your milk for butterfat content and the protein content, and they give you back the results. And that, so I, I tend to think that uh, it's not something that you do it uh, by yourself at farm level, but if you can get in touch with those fellas, 
they can give you that information. And it will be a good way of also <clears throat> recording, doing, doing uh, you know, milk recording, um, taking advantage of the dairy milk recording services that are offered. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Asia, for that. I don't know, is a DRC, dairy recording center uh, in available in all the sub counties or how maybe how the maybe, farmers can be able to reach them? Maybe I can talk, uh, I can handle that. Huh? Okay. Uh, as the, uh, because the other time Kibe who was presenting, he talked about the, um, these labs and there were six labs. Huh? One of them is here in Lenloret, where I am. We've got the other one in Nakuru, Naivasha, Karatina, Voy, and, uh, and Kisumu. So those are the labs, those are the government labs that can help in the issues of um, milk analysis. And uh, it, is free, it is free of charge to those farmers who are doing livestock registration and the milk recording. So those services are available. Thank you. Well, thank you, Stephen, for that. I hope, uh, Viola, you can be able to get in touch with the DRC at any of the stations that have been mentioned. We go to Simon Thuo. He's asking, uh, I would like to know if there are templates for record recording animal feeds. That is quantity per animal per day. I would like to monitor how my goats respond to different rations and how this affects overall productivity. Uh, I'll request if we can take this question back to KLBA. Stephen, will yes. you help? Yes, maybe I'll try where I can. Mm. I know, as I said, we are working on an app on that, but when it comes to the physical uh, records, uh, Mm -hmm. to help all the physical cards to help in that. We've not yet come with one, but uh, with our app, we are going to have all those things consolidated. But I also think we've got these private um, institutions uh, that have come up with such kind of uh, cards to help in monitoring those, uh, the issues of feeds. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think uh, Paris, I can also respond to that. Simon, yes. uh, thank you for your question. Uh, templates uh, for recording animal feeds, uh, maybe you may not get us the, them directly from us, but uh, if you need that information from us, I think we have people and experts here in Kagri who can help you get that. Again, uh, like uh, Stephen has said, we have private practitioners who are developing such kind of feeds quality, but uh, you will discover that most of them are just promoting their commercial feeds. So, uh, with with consultation of experts, we can maybe give you the best quantities per animal per day. I there is a time I left Egerton University doing such a kind of research. We can always liaise with them and see whether you can get that. Because uh, the, the the other danger and the best the other danger is that uh, you, if you follow a template from a feed a certain feed manufacturer, they are just trying to tell you what they are they, 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 their concentrate is. And uh, that is what they are trying to promote. But the best thing to tell you the best feed is the animal itself. The response of the animal to that feed. That one gives you the perfect. Because even if I tell you, uh, give your cow 16% uh, crude protein, what is recommended and above, uh, give your, 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 your goat maybe ash content of uh, 0 0.325, something like that. But at the end of the day, how that animal responds to that specific feed will tell you whether that is the best feed for that animal or not. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. We have Penina Moria. Is as, she's asking, do you have other records, other record cards like for poultry? Mm -hmm. Okay, I've not um, been able to see others for poultry, maybe somebody can from the panel. I believe uh, Kagrik as a center, uh, we are doing something to do with the uh, goat production coming in future from our substation in Kirinyaga. We will also in future be doing something to do with the uh, poultry, uh, multiplication of poultry and uh, hatcheries of poultry. By that time when we are doing poultry, it would be very possible for us also to develop such a card. 
But right now, I will not lie to you. We don't have any from our center. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if there's nobody who is uh, adding to that from the panelists, we go to Mary Madenge. Mary Madenge is saying good presentation since record keeping is, a ve is very critical. Is it possible to come up with a uniform AI fee set nationally to ensure proper records for inseminations? Mary Madenga is concerned with the uh, insemination records. I know there's a record that farmers are usually given after inseminations. Uh, it could be different for, for maybe uh, each county. So she's asking if we could uh, get one that is uniform nationally. Well, I think uh, I can give this to Mary Kaigi from KLBA. Could you please uh, maybe attempt I think I didn't get the question. Please, would you, would you repeat the question, please? Okay. Mary is asking, uh, she's uh, first uh, complimenting the presentation, and then she's asking whether it is possible to come up with a uniform AI fee set nationally to ensure proper records for inseminations. I think I, I cannot be able to answer that question. Okay. Maybe somebody else can choose somebody else, please. Okay, okay, no problem. Dr. Asiaya, could you please uh, ask asking if, if it is possible to come up with um, a uniform AI fee set? Yes, nationally. I think it is possible. We used to have uh, those e AI fee sets in the old days. Uh, when we were running Kenya National AI Services, the only difference was that um, when it comes to the charges, we leave it mm -hmm. open. Mm -hmm. And the problem is a lot of the inseminators uh, may not feel very comfortable mm -hmm. about uh, indicating exactly how much they have charged because there is that traceability. <clears throat> I know that... Um, in the field, there is a tendency where we have some unscrupulous uh, fellas who will even use local, you know, so-called uh, local semen in quotes, maybe like uh, that is uh, referring to semen derived from the country as opposed to imported semen. And then they, they have it, they have convinced the farmers that imported semen is more expensive. So, they would end up using, say, Greek semen, and then they charge a lot of money. And if, they, if the farmer retains the fee set, you can now see the implications. Uh, these people will be followed up. So whereas we agree that it is, uh, it is possible to have a uniform fee set, but I think there will be resistance from those people. But then I think in principle, I think it's a beautiful idea because it can bring some sanity. In the, in the way we do our business. Well, th thank you, Dr. Asia, for that. Uh, it's true that uh, most of the AIs are done by private practitioners. And these private practitioners are business people. So there's some information they may not be willing to, uh, to give out. But uh, as Dr. Asia said, it's possible to come up with a, nas with a uniform one. But this, I believe, will also require some uh, some uh, partnerships with other stakeholders, maybe government and, and, and the rest. So we go to Martin Luther Oyindo. Oyindo, that, that's just an email he has given. Roger Swakungu is requesting to know what feeds or measures to put in place to improve the, the density of cow milk to the standard required by most processors of 1.028. Um, okay. I think Rogers, your question was tackled in our last class by uh, Kibe, John Kibe. Maybe uh, Stephen can tell us, uh, because they say that uh, what you need mostly in improvement of butterfat and the content and the density was uh, 
a little a bit increase of um, um, fibers on, on, on your animal uh, compared to the ratio. And for us now to maybe be determined which specific uh, exact feed and measure, we also need to know what the cow is uh, feeding right now. And uh, we see what should be improved to get that uh, required uh, standard. But you can always uh, liaise with us after this, uh, either us or uh, the Kenya Livestock Breeders Association. Uh, when they are doing the milk testing, they will also advise you on uh, what to give more to the feeds. Maybe, Stephen, you have something else to add on that? I may not have something much to add on it, but what I can say, if maybe he can give us his contact, then we can talk much later on that. If, I, if he can give us his contacts, then we can contact him and talk much more, much more on that later on. Mm -hmm. uh, that's Thank true. You. Thank you, Stephen. So yeah. Rogers, please get in touch with the KLBA. You can mark that attention to Stephen Juma. He'll be able to, to assist you on that. Uh -huh. I think uh, John Wanjiru had uh, raised his hand. I think we can give him a chance to speak. Okay, please go on. John Wanjiru, kindly unmute yourself. As we wait for him, uh, for all those who haven't submitted their KVB registration numbers and details, please do so. Thank you. That's any comment too. Good presentation. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you. Maybe you can unmute, uh, you can mute again. Okay. Uh, Albert Albert Yegon is uh, requesting for the presentation to be shared. We will do that. Kim Tai Chelei is asking how he can get the K. Kim Tai is asking how he can get the KVB number. We have Dr. Agutu from KVB. If you, uh, Dr. Mary Agutu, maybe you can help uh, Kimutai. Um, is Kimutai a trained animal health technician? I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe we'll just. Maybe it could be a farmer if we have more details. Uh, okay. Yeah. Kimutai, okay. maybe you can give us more details whether you uh, are trained and. Uh, on animal health or some uh, any relevant course in animal training so that we can uh, be able to help you. We go to, sorry, somebody wants uh, to. Okay. I was going to say okay. that, uh, that uh, all trained animal health technicians and technologists, whether certificate, diploma, degree in animal health and BVM must be registered. So they contact Kenya Veterinary Board and we'll give them the, the, the requirements. But if you have graduated after 2016, then you require to go for internship. For this year, we have not yet uh, started off the internship, but we will announce when, uh, when the time comes. So if he's a trained person, he can get in touch with us through you and we, and we, we, we give them the, the information, the instructions on how to. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tari. I hope uh, Kim Tai, you've been helped. Kindly get in touch with us or with KVB. You will be able to be uh, guided on how to get the KVB number. Peter Nyaga is just uh, com uh, complimenting the presentation. Oh, okay. Kim Tai Chelugu is a farmer. So he has written there is a farmer. So I don't think whether he needs a KVB number. That is, is that true, Dr. Mary? Uh, yes, if he's a farmer, he will not need a KVB number. 
Yes. We are only giving CPD points to registered professionals, not to farmers, but uh, he can still contact us if he needs more information. Okay. Thank there you. is, I have a comment. Eh? Yes, yes, Doctor. Yes. Yeah, um, <clears throat> my comment is this. The yes. presentation was very good. That is my personal opinion. And um, there is something I think which was uh, crucial which I think maybe the presenter forgot to mention, that even as we talk about records, one thing we must keep in mind is that the records are as good as the person who gets the records for us. Many of us, and this is I'm giving a personal experience, we tend to be farmers, telephone farmers, and you keep somebody at home, maybe the workers. But when you go and you ask for records, you'll find those records are doctored. Sometimes if you are given the wrong records, you can even easily end up selling one of your best animals because you think it is not performing well when in fact the reality could be different. What I would urge uh, farmers is that even if you have workers, don't trust them 100%. Sometimes have a hands-on approach, even if it is, uh, say, milking, Go in yourself and milk without uh, giving them prior notice. You will be surprised at some of the things you'll get because uh, that can help them realize that at any one time you can intervene in the management of uh, your enterprise and be able to verify the records that they give you. Thank you very much. Oh, that, that's very true, Dr. Terry. Thank you for that uh, advice. Uh, from personal experience. I think we are done with the Q&A session. Do we have any questions uh, on our Facebook page? Uh, none so far. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, quickly go through our chat feature. Maybe Chebet, you can assist me if you find any question because I know there are quite a number of uh, comments there, but most of them could be on uh, their KVB registration numbers and their names. If there's any question that, so that we don't uh, miss to answer any presentation. I'm seeing Joseph uh, putting on a comment maybe on chat, which I, I, I also agree with him, that butterfat content varies from one breed of animal to another. That is, Freshens has the lowest butterfat content, while JC has the highest. Uh, if he wants to go for high butterfat content, let him go for JC. Uh, that is a good comment. Jesse's and Gansy's uh, seem to have higher butterfat content than Freshen. So... The breed of the animal also matters. That's why we said uh, if, if you want density and butterfat content, kindly of last with us. We need to understand some of these nitty gritties, the, the breed of the animal versus the, 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 the feed intake that you're already feeding so that now we can be able to advise further. Thank you. Thank you, Mary, for that. I think uh, there's not much on, uh, on the chat feature. Uh, there was a comment, sorry, sorry for interrupting you. Okay. Uh, there's a comment from Martin Luther Oyendo. He's a county director at Itataveta County. He mentioned that they have, uh, in Voi, we have a butterfat testing lab. You're welcome to the offices. Thank you. I'm also, I'm also seeing something. I'm sorry for this. No, it's okay. It's okay. It is directed at Lillian Chebet. That, yes. uh, they, that they didn't get PowerPoint presentation on SAR catalog interpretation. Hello? Um, <laughs> no. Sorry about that. Uh, my apologies for that. I will make a point of sending, sending the presentation, both presentations today. And also, if you need any of our previous, previous presentations, you can get in touch with me, and I'll be sure to share them. Thank you. 
Okay. How, how can they get in touch with you, uh, Chebet? Maybe you had shared your email? Yes, my, my email and my mobile number is on the webinar poster just below. You. You, can get, you. you can get in touch with me through that. That's right. So I think time is not on our side. Uh, we will uh, be over with that Q&A session. Before I give closing remarks, I'll invite Dr. Mary Agutu maybe to say something. Mary Agutu is from KVB, the, uh, the organization that is awarding the institution. You're welcome. Okay, uh, thank you so much. That uh, presentation has been wonderful. Unfortunately, I joined a little late. There are too many webinars all over. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the presentation was uh, great. And I just like to encourage the professionals that it is important that you keep records. Even if the farmer doesn't keep their own, keep yours. Because we find uh, situations where farmers uh, complain about our practitioners, but the farmer has records that the practitioner doesn't have. So you need to keep your records and keep them very clearly so that in case there is any litigation, you have something to protect yourself. Yeah, so, so it's encouraged that practitioners keep records, even as they help the farmers also keep records. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mary, for that advice. Uh, practitioners, you've been advised to keep your own records. You, you never know when those records will be uh, important. They, they might save you. So in Let my us, closing remarks, please, yes. please. I'm sorry yes. for interrupting. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing Diana Muga is asking, hi, where can I train AI for pigs? Mm -hmm. Diana, we are planning also to be doing pig AI, uh, to be selling AI semen. Uh, kindly lie us with me. I will maybe connect you with one or two people who I know uh, are good in AI training for pigs. Eh? I know okay. some farms that are doing pig AI, and maybe we can liaise and see uh, where best to get that kind of training. But as at now, I'm not very sure of a one specific center that is just doing AI for pigs only. Okay. Uh, Dr. Asia, do we have any government institution training uh, pig AI? None that I know of. Okay. Um, because it's not it's re really been a felt need in this country, but mm -hmm. I tend to think we are getting there. Okay. Um, now that the people are showing interest, it's like mm -hmm. goat AI. Most people are not even interested in that. But now there are people who have been trained. Um, I tend to think if there is enough interest, the, the various, our training institutions, their heaties, mm -hmm. and even the universities might uh, come up with a curriculum for that. Uh, true. Uh, as we come to the end of this session, I would like to thank all participants who've joined us uh, from the beginning of these uh, webinars. I believe we started in March 2nd. Uh, without you participants, these uh, webinars could not be uh, successful. Thank you for honoring our invitation and joining us. I'd also like to thank all contributors who've also facilitated uh, the webinars from KLBA, from uh, CAGRIC, uh, from, KB, from KVB. Uh, thank you so much for making, uh, for having made these webinars a success. Uh, maybe also to uh, notify uh, participants that CAGRIC uh, is celebrating its 75th anniversary since inception. Kagrik started in 1946, so we are celebrating our anniversary, 75th anniversary. And we want to thank uh, all uh, who have made uh, this journey a success, starting with our parent ministry, uh, our agents who are distributing our products, the county governments who've partnered with us, uh, the inseminators who are using our products, also the farmers who are also using our product, the research institutions, the training institutions, 
everyone who, have, who, have, who has made uh, this journey of 75 years a success, please receive a big thank you from Kagrik. Uh, maybe also to notify you that we've come to the end of this webinar series for this session, but we are also planning to have another session soon. Uh, you are requested to send in your recommendations, maybe on topics that you might want to be tackled. Feel free to post on our Facebook pages, or you can also send us emails. Otherwise, uh, from me, it's a thank you and maybe a bye-bye. But before we say bye, our Director of Strategy and Planning, Dr. Asiaya, you can give a word. Um, thank you very much, uh, Paris. Um, I'd like to just say thank you for uh, all the participants and those people who have helped us uh, with, together with the Kenya Livestock Breeders Association. This series of uh, lectures have been very important for many of us uh, for revision purposes and also gathering new information. And uh, we hope that uh, you will continue to participate in future. Like Pedis has said, any topic that you think that um, would be of interest, please let us know. We have enough people who can uh, delve into those topics and uh, be able to bring us the latest information. And uh, I think everybody should uh, benefit from this. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, from Kagrik, it's bye and thank you. And please uh, continue spreading the message about Kagrik and our products. Uh, products are high quality and they are made specifically for the Kenyan farmers. Bye and thank you.